All right. Hello there, everyone. Welcome to this very informative webcast. Seems extraordinarily timely. We're going to be talking about precision bottom fishing for explosive profits. So, yeah, markets are really taking off pretty good today. And we did, in fact, launch a bottom fishing campaign in my trading room this morning. And so we're going to be talking about exactly the system I use to do such a thing in this very webcast. So let's get to it. Hopefully you're excited about that. I don't know how more timely you can be. The first thing you got to do is learn to not be fearful of market corrections. If you have a precise system, market bottoms create explosive profit potential. And so do realize that market bottoms come in a variety. There are bottoms that lead to higher highs in the stock market, and there are bottoms that inevitably uh, get taken out and go to lower lows. But each of them does create short-term opportunity and explosive opportunity at that of course major bottoms are where you really have a lot of fun but we've been having fun this year in fact we've already conducted four successful bottom fishing campaigns where we buy 10 stocks at a time this year prior to today so this will be the fifth one and we've clocked in more than 30 percent this year so far just bottom fishing and so for a lot of you that's an entire year's work and it could have come in about two weeks time altogether. So we're going to talk about that today. Hopefully this current one will have a little more legs to it, although I'm still a bit of a skeptic about that as well. But we'll see. Time will tell. Uh, the reality is, though, in order to make that a reality, in order to be fearless enough to be able to do what we've done, for example, it's going to require a paradigm shift or a new way of thinking. It really and truly is. And so we're going to be talking an awful lot about that. It's, it's really a three-step approach uh, to this paradigm shift. All right, so my promise to you guys, you're going to learn the skills necessary to nail market bottoms with precision so that you'll never miss another uh, explosive bottom fishing opportunity ever again. Boy, there's a lot of big words there. Uh, but it's true. You know, sometimes the markets do work themselves to a lower low, which gives you an even better opportunity at that point. And a lot of times you make money on the prior one as well. So it really is a terrific approach. It's a high probability approach. Nothing, of course, is the holy grail that doesn't fail from time to time. Uh, but it is about as close as you're ever going to get. So let's talk more about it. My name is Steve Chappell. I am the Director of Trading Systems Development here at Vector Vest. I've been with the company now more than 20 years. Uh, it's been quite a journey. And I am just a small piece of a very highly skilled team of people. And we all take pride, of course, in delivering the best stock market guidance you can get anywhere and even at any price. And this webcast today will be no exception because you'll be able to walk away from this webcast with enough information to get out there and get your feet wet if you wanted to do so. You're also going to learn about another way where you can get even more well-informed. Okay, There's always more to learn if you're willing to. So. We're going to talk about all of that. On our journey today, we're going to look at the system that I use to make precise market entries at market bottoms. I've done more than, I haven't counted them. Okay, probably should go back and actually do the count. I did count them at one point, but it's been a while and I haven't counted anything for the last couple of years. But I'm willing to say probably more than 40 bottom fishing campaigns I've done now over the last 20 years. So you get a couple a year on average. Some years there's one or fewer. And on some years there's more than three or four. It just depends on the calendar year that you're dealing with and what the stock market you know, inevitably does. But you're going to learn how to time it, and that's incredibly important. You're also going to learn the key attributes to pick the best stocks at the right time, and it's not going to typically be your household names. It's not going to be Amazon, Facebook, Google, uh, Procter & Gamble, you know, these kinds of equities. We're going to be buying the blood, exactly as Warren Buffett once said. You want to buy when blood is in the streets. The one thing that's left out there is you also want to buy the blood if you're willing to because that's where the real money is, provided those stocks still have at least some value to them. right? And so we have some scanning capability in VectorVest that's going to get that job done quickly. And then we're also going to learn some trading tactics that can make you even more money. Okay, All right, so I am riding solo today just to let everyone know. So I will try to answer as many questions at the end of the webcast today as possible. And it looks like some of you might be having some audio issue. The audio seems to be coming across fine. So it could be some kind of internet you know, uh, activity uh, near you or something. 
Uh, so I'm going to proceed ahead here, okay? Now, this is just a little something to kind of cut the, uh, get the get the thought process going and, and and make sure we're really got our heads screwed on for this presentation. What's the hardest part in nailing market bottoms for you guys? This is always interesting to me. You usually see a predominant response in one uh, one thing in particular, but it's always interesting to see if there's maybe something that I haven't seen before or what whatever the case may be. But please uh, interact, get in there, type in what you think is the hardest part about nailing the bottom, and we'll see if we can't help you out before you leave here today. Yeah, so this is uh, a little bit different. I think the, and maybe a sign of the times, really, because the most common response I'm seeing here, and probably more than a dozen of them, are centered around whether or not it's a dead cat bounce. So maybe not so hard knowing that the market is hit rally mode the day it does, but is it going to have a lot of legs? Well, yeah. The the trick there is, I'm not sure you ever really know, because you'd, you'd need to be able to see in the future to know for sure. Uh, but there are some things that tend to lean you a little bit more strongly in the direction of does it have enough legs to get the job done or not. And that's really going to come down to some levels and the indicators that we apply for that timing purpose. So we will hit on that as we go through. All right? uh, believe it or not, uh, this little rally here, not saying it will, but it has the propensity to do a little bit better than you might think. Okay. So let's get into it and talk a little bit more about it. We talked about we're going to have to make a paradigm shift, so we're going to start making that shift together now. And what we first got to learn is that we've got to get away from buying safe, undervalued stocks rising in price if we want to get double to triple digit gains in just days or sometimes weeks. Certainly for the triple digit gains, it usually requires weeks, right? Uh, they're going to do really well, and it's not to say that they won't. And it's not to say that there's not a lot of comfort in buying NVIDIA or Microsoft or Google or you name it. You know, insert company XYZ that you feel is great. Or hopefully that Vectorvest feels is great. It would be a better uh, entry there. But what we've got to do instead is make a transition into buying the blood. Just as Buffett has told us. Except in this case, not just on the market level, but on the even the individual stock level. And so we can come across winners like this, like OVV, where at the tail end of the COVID collapse, literally has gone up more than a thousand percent since then. So when you start thinking about Google, Facebook, Amazon, Nvidia, have they gone up a thousand percent since March of 2020? I don't believe they have, right? And so this is the process, you know, this is what we're trying to find. We're trying to find not just a, simple, a, a winner, we're trying to find an entire basket of these guys. And we're going to show you how we do it. It's not to say that you're going to walk away with 1,000% returns on all, your, all of your trades. What we talk about in terms of reliability is double to triple digit gains in days to weeks. Sometimes that means low double digits. And when you hit a major market bottom, you can get into the triple digit returns. It's really a function of how far the market drives upward after you enter. So nailing the bottom is incredibly important and knowing a little bit about the depth and potential of a market bottom, of course, is also important. And there's one missing ingredient in the current potential bottom uh, that I think you guys are, are thinking the right thing, at least in terms of, is this rally going to have a lot of legs? I'm not sure it is going to have the amount of legs that others in years past have. But what you're also going to see is that even this year, we've had double digit returns in just days, even this year so far. Okay. All right. So timing, in order to get that done, timing is going to be everything. And what we mean by that, of course, is a lot of people are going to try to figure out ways to time the stock market to figure out when stock prices are low even outside of the economics of it, just applying technical indicators, looking for oversold levels, for example, a very common approach would be something like with a lane stochastics or an RSI 
or a Williams percent R. We saw Kramer do that not long ago on uh, his evening show on CNBC, where one of his experts, in fact, did uh, use Williams percent R to call a, a temporary bottom, right? And the stock market ultimately went lower. So what we need really is something that's a little bit more reliable than that you know, at the end of the day. And so what we want to avoid to the best of our ability is bad entries and bad money management, uh, no matter what the case turns out to be, so that we don't fall victim to buying stocks that are bloody, that only get bloodier and watch it happen. Okay, so we're gonna take a full approach to this. We're gonna look at timing, we're gonna look at the right stocks to buy and even how to manage them, which is where the rubber meets the road. Right, but the problem, let's take them in isolation. We're gonna start dealing with timing first. And the problem for most people is that timing is typically off. And it's usually because the system is incomplete, the system for timing. If you're relying on an individual indicator, maybe even curving the look back period to try to best nail mar uh, market bottoms in the past so that you can reliably nail them in the future, it's, there's, a, there's a bit of merit to that actually. Okay, but it's not very precise at the end of the day. And so what we do is we're gonna fix that. And how we're gonna fix it is improving the system because that's gonna determine your success. It's, it should be as easy as one, two, three. We're gonna be detailing when to buy, what to buy, and when to sell. We're gonna talk about precise entries, how to get there, we are gonna show it. We're gonna talk about the stocks that truly have the explosive upside potential and how to find them. And we're going to talk about the money management that we use. Okay, so let's detail each one individually now all the way down, well, most of the way down the rabbit hole. There's always more to learn. Can't teach you everything we know in just 45 minutes, obviously. But we'll get you, we'll get you head in the right direction for sure. So when we talk about precise market entries, what we mean, of course, is getting in the day the market blasts off. And on a lot, many occasions we do. But there's really a window of opportunity there within the first several days. We're going to talk about that. But once you get beyond those, oftentimes at that point, you are in fact better off going back and beginning to look at your Microsofts and your Facebooks and your Googles again. Because once you get a couple weeks into a rally, all of these stocks that were bloody were in fact bloody for a reason. And they're going to lose a lot of that uh, trampoline effect really within that first couple of weeks. Now they can still keep going and you saw with OVV, that, that sucker just kept on plowing. Most of them don't do that, you know? So the real juice, the real good part of bottom fishing is really the first few days. That's, you know you're on a good market potential bottom where when you launch a campaign in the first few days, you're already up double digits. That's usually gonna be a pretty good campaign uh, when all is said and done. And boy, isn't it interesting that I'm sitting here and it just hit me again. I work at VectorVest, so we're a little jaded. Many people don't make double digit returns in a year. I'm talking about, about making double digit returns in just days. Could be on an entire portfolio, okay? So again, a lot of problems. Most people are either too early, too late. I want you to notice this graphic in particular. So if we wait for tried and true technical analysis, for example, to identify, say, uptrend or, in this case, breaking prior swing high resistance or whatever the case may be. I want you to look at the green bars left of that pink arrow, and I want you to look at the green bars right of that, green, of that pink arrow. Where was all the juice? Where were all the good gains? If we were buying stocks on the Dow, or if we just bought the index? All of the good gains were from the bottom to the technical break, right? After the technical break, congratulations, what you get the leftovers. So what we gotta do is figure out how to get on that big tall green bar right down there at the lows. That's what we call the blast off day. And we've got a fairly, I would say, very precise system actually on just how to do that. All right, so let's get to it. The missing piece, we need precise indicators for when markets are bottoming, bottoming and ready to blast off. So here are just some recent situations and I haven't detailed them all. I tried to pick out ones that would be quite clear. 
and also some of the better ones just over the last couple of years. So obviously we had the COVID collapse. Uh, we actually launched a bottom fishing campaign on March the 26th of that year. Okay. You also then <clears throat> had a bit of a, a substantial sell-off in September through October into the early portions of November of 2020, and we had another opportunity then. This year we've had more than one, uh, but the one that's been the most productive is the one with the final green arrow. We made about 19%, well, 18.9 to be exact, uh, thereabout on that particular uh, campaign, as you'll see here in a little bit. But I would say that when you look at the chart, that's a pretty good track record right there. Now, if you go back and you, you look at what I teach you here in a second, <clears throat> the nice thing about VectorVest is it leaves all the history. So you can go back and check it out and see how good the system really is, even for yourself, because I have limited time to work with, of course. But when you get it right, <clears throat> even good stocks like Apple are going to go up nicely. And so let's go take a peek, because we got to make this strategic shift. So instead of using a Stochastics or an RSI or a Williams Percent R, we're going to use VectorVest. We're going to use our core proprietary indicators to get the job done. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. And so, oops, how'd that get on the screen? Um, what we can see today, market's having a pretty good day today, in fact, right? So we look at a couple of uh, indications, and we can actually find them right here on the homepage to tell you the truth. We can even see them as of yesterday. Uh, we can see the buy to sell ratio was below a critical level of 0.2. It was coming in at 0.17. Of course, it's been below 0.2 for a little while, a little stretch here. And what we know is that when this indicator gets down there, we are searching for a bottom. It doesn't mean that the bottom is tomorrow or the next day or even the next few days. But the average time spent below 0.2 is about 9 or 10 days on average over the last 25 years. About the longest amount of time you spend down there below 0.2 is as many as 40 days, 42 days, I think. So we know that we need to be on the lookout for what we termed earlier the explosive day. We also like to see this MTI indicator. This deals with the underlying trend of the stock market. We like to see that one below 0.6 so that the underlying trend has been really down for a good bit, for a good while, okay? Meaning you've got some longer term pain in play there. Um, the buy to sell ratio I didn't hit all the way home. This looks at our recommendation profile of all 9,000 stocks that we track. And so when this indicator is say 0.17 like it was yesterday, that means there's 0.17 buys in our 9,000 stock database, 0.17 buys to every sell. So there are literally almost nine times more sell recommended stocks in the database than there are buys. And so, my friends, that is when blood is in the streets. Can it get bloodier again in the future? Sure. But it's like stretching a rubber band. Uh, let, me, let me show you some graphics around that thought of the rubber band. Okay, so let me go to timing. We have a market timing graph. And at least in most people's <clears throat> memory here within this room, I, I, I would venture to guess we can think back to 2008-2009 as maybe one of, one of the more prolific bear markets in recent memory. You know, the COVID collapse was a unique situation. This one actually occurred just on uh, pure economics, right? And, but Notice that when the market falls, it doesn't go all the way from the top to the bottom in a straight line, right? Because when you, inevitably, when the rubber band stretches a little too far too fast, the stock market is going to snap back and head the other way. There is actually a really good opportunity to be long the stock market from, say, April to June 11th or so of 2008. It's actually a pretty good run. Uh, then the wheels really came off, and then inevitably, you know, we we get down to these situations down here where there was some terrific uh, opportunities. So there were opportunities all along the way here, but what I want to do is show you some of the best ones because you know that's where the money is in the future, and it's where it's been in the past. But all of them are worth doing. 
Okay, but let me let me um, show you what we mean here. So if I come over to the right and I put on this indicator buy to sell ratio and I put on this in indicator MTI. All right, there's one requirement and it would have been true for this little mini bottom here. Might be a situation that we're in a similar uh, similar to the current situation could be you know but you got about a few weeks of run actually you got about uh, a couple months worth of run here believe it or not uh, in in uh, late 2008 so we had that run earlier in the year in April to June then you, here's another one okay but when this uh, when this indicator down let me zoom in so you can see it when this indicator gets down here below point two we said we're searching for a bottom uh, when the MTI gets below 0.6, it's likely to be an even better bottom from that rubber band analogy. These indicators are getting extraordinarily low on the scale. Okay, And so what we look for is this day here. We look for the blast off day, the day where the stock market takes off. But we know to be looking already before that happens. And that's really the big trick because what we do is we say, I can't teach the entire <laughs> approach in 45 minutes, but we also notice a reversal pattern heading into that explosive day, so we're already on high alert. And we really didn't have, we had a reversal pattern here, and I think buy to sell ratio certainly met the requirement, but the market didn't follow through and we didn't have that big lift day as confirmation like you have here. So we have pattern and lift. And there's actually a few more things that happen here on this prior day, like bottom fishing strategies are up double digits that day. So if the market opens higher again the next day, we know that the bottom fishing stocks that we like to pick are already catching fire. And so we're getting a lot of evidence that the market is gonna go on at least a little bit of a run here. Okay. Now eventually this one turns over and heads lower. So we've got a, a systematic way to approach uh, you know, how to do your entries here and your exits. But this ends up being the big one. Right? And so you have another even better pattern here actually. So this is a stronger pattern. If we think about the prior pattern, the green bar was within the body of the red bar. If we think about this pattern, the green bar takes out the entire body of the red bar and a lot more in just a single day. The market exploded here, no question about it. And we, were, we would have been right in there bottom fishing. And if you don't believe me, we leave a track record, which is what makes this so very cool. Uh, now, if I come up and go to views. Now remember, I can't get to a lot of questions till I get to the end, okay? I'm riding solo here. But if I get over here, I don't want to go chasing too many directions. There's no need to. Okay, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know in this webcast, so pay attention, okay? Uh, if we go back here to 2009, you might say this is ancient history. Well, I'm teaching you that when we see this thing, these kinds of things again now, and we're actually seeing them in some respects today. Okay. There's one thing that's missing and we're going to explain it as we go through what I'm about to show now. But it's got everything else. It's got everything else but the one thing that I think really matters. Okay. So maybe the most. We'll talk about that. So uh, what I'm going to do though is go back to that time frame. So this is March of 2009 and we're going to start out here on March 6th. Okay. And when I do that I'm going to slide down here a little bit. We wrote an essay that weekend in our investment newsletter to our customers that we felt the market was already itching to rally. And this is a great essay to read if you never have, because a lot of the signs and symptoms that are quoted in here are things to look for here again in the future. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go right to the good stuff. So if I go down to strategy, this is how to take advantage of what we're seeing. It says here that the price of the composite has now fallen eight of the last nine weeks. Whew. Man, it seems like today almost, doesn't it? It's now fallen below the bear market low of 1542 on November 20th of 08. 
we now need to go all the way back to 2003 to the bottom after the tech bubble collapse to find our next level of support. Uh, while looking at the all daily view of the market timing graph, note the similarity though in the pairs of the lows of our indicators. And so that's another level of knowledge that you're going to learn uh, more about. And I'm going to tell you later on how you can. But uh, not only did we see bottoming pattern, not only did we see oversold conditions, we saw markets were trying to rally in the later parts of the day already. Uh, we saw our indicators, our proprietary indicators, hitting higher lows while the market was hitting lower lows. So we saw the steam coming out of the market. We saw that the market was itching to rally, just as he wrote, for the reasons mentioned and a few more. Okay, And so we said, for those of you who are riding the wave with us, we are getting ready to, uh, you know, we're still going short with contra ETFs. We have been short predominantly since June of 2008 at this point. Uh, and, um, you know, you had that mini run from, anyway, we talked about it earlier from April to June, but, uh, we are going to exit those and go along with one of these five bottom fishing strategies, Blyers, bottom feeders, bottoms up, jailbreak, pirates, silvers. Okay. So let's go look at some of those just to show you, and then we'll bring it all current. Okay. Because what's going to happen here is we're finally going to get what I think is still the missing element today. And that is the catalyst. Some kind of economic catalyst that can really catapult the stock market for weeks and months and hopefully years to come. And back here in 2009, that catalyst was Citigroup. They announced they turned a profit the first quarter of that year. And here we are in the midst of a financial crisis. So that sent absolute nirvana through the stock market. If we think back to the most recent, recent COVID collapse, you got about $3 trillion worth of financial stimulus that sent nirvana through the entire stock market. And just when you think that there can't be a catalyst like that now, well, they call it a catalyst for a reason. You don't know what it's going to be, but that's really the missing piece. You know, because I look at, for example, the numbers this morning, GDP came in actually softer than expected, right? So uh, I'm not sure we're seeing uh, a situation now like we are back in 2009 where the stock market can go up for weeks and months and years on end, but that doesn't mean that it can't go up for just weeks. And so let me show you how good bottom fishing can be in just a couple of weeks or even less. You see, even this year, some of the people that I coach have been making 10% in a day all right, so let me show you. Let me go back here to that graphic so I can reset that in your mind. Oops, where'd my market timing graph go? There it is. So here we are at this tail end of this financial crisis, and we're saying the market's itching to rally, and we wrote that on March the 6th, which is right there, my friends. A couple of days for this thing took off. It took off on March the 10th. If I go back to the newsletter, what's it going to say? Well, news that Citigroup had been profitable the first two months of 2009 sparked a major rally on Wall Street today, driving stock prices sharply higher. Presuming that the rally continues tomorrow, presuming that the rally continues tomorrow and with three uh, yellow lights, in an up-down situation, prudent investors may go bargain hunting and bottom fishing. Aggressive investors and traders should play the market with a, uh, to the upside. For those of you who are riding the wave, we went long today on the blast off day with selections from jailbreak, which we know around these parts is the ultimate bottom fishing strategy. It takes a tremendous amount of guts because the stock prices are low, <laughs> but that's what creates the opportunity. See, so if I go back, let me just run you through um, this next part here, maybe a little bit in advance, but I think it's the right time to do it. So I'm going to go uh, to a tool called Unisearch. In here, you have an entire folder of searches called bottom fishing. So this is really now segment two. Okay. And in segment two, what we're going to find out is that if we go back and see, well, how good, how, how good did these guys do? 
when they told everybody exactly what to do. Okay, let's go back. 2009. Again, we're going to do some current ones, don't worry. Okay, so we'll go to March, and we got in on the 10th, right? That means we would have run the strategy as the night of the 9th and bought them. There's going to be a little slippage here, but we would have bought these stocks that next morning. So Century Aluminum, oh, look at that, Citigroup, I'll be darned. Uh, financials, Huntington, another bank. Las Vegas Sands of all things. Those casinos did go nuts. Watch this. So we have this tool called Quick Test. And if we quick test, say that, oh, we don't need to do 50. Let's do 10. 10 is the right number you'll see later on. All right, quick test them. These stocks from then to now are up 1,500%. Now, you're not going to do that. <laughs> so you're not going to allow a stock to go up 4,509% without taking some profit. I can promise you that. Because yeah. it didn't go straight up to 4,509%, right? So let's back it. What if I had the guts to stay in for just a week? Oops, where'd March 10th go? All right, and then just a week, right? Maybe just a week. What if I had the guts to stay in there for a week? So let's go to the 17th. All right, they're up 32% in a week. Is that pretty good? Can you live with that? That's still about 1,500% a year on average. Let's go two weeks. Fifty-one percent in two weeks. Let's go four weeks. Sixty-one percent. Let's go. I don't know. A couple months. <laughs> Let's go to June. I don't know. Tenth. It's a couple months, right? Two hundred sixty-five percent. In months is that double to triple digit gains and it was even early on even in a week right all right so we're not at a March 9th we're not at a March 2009 bottom just yet but we are showing you how to make that shift to know when a bottom is in play all bottoms are not created equal we're the first to tell you that but eventually we will have another bottom like the one I just showed we will I'm gonna repeat that at some point in the future, we will have another bottom like the one I just showed. And what I'm showing you in this webcast, those kinds of returns are possible in the future. When that's going to happen, that we don't know. Right? But that's why we go to bat every single time because you never know. And money can be made on each of them. So uh, I'm going to do some more up to date current quick testing after I run you through the slides here first. I'll be sure not to miss any points by doing this okay what we want are double to triple digit returns and we want them quick you know we want them in weeks to months not years so the traditional approach that's not the right solution we need to go after these bottom fishing searches we're going to talk about what they are and why they work so well so if we do good stocks on a on a, on a major bottom this is actually another major bottom in 2016 uh, this was prior to the Trump election, which was in October. There was actually a really good run from February into uh, summer, where the markets tend to get a bit quiet. Summer hiatus. Have you ever guys ever heard of that? So we're approaching summer hiatus again right now as we speak, actually. Uh, but um, look, if you buy average stocks, you're going to get average returns, maybe market performance. And I say average stocks, what I really am saying is buying the best of the best here. Uh, at least back at this time in 2016. Amazon, Facebook, Home Depot, Disney, Visa, Google, Walgreens, Apple, Gilead Sciences. Anybody ever heard of them? Well, in three months, they went up 10%. But I feel like, well, all right, that's okay. I feel like this guy. <laughs> I had this great opportunity to go out there and buy stocks on sale. And because I was reluctant to go chase the right ones, the ones that were the bloodiest, I get normal market returns for my efforts. Yay! Not satisfied. 
So how do we know the big winners? We got searches for them. I've already showed you one from one point in time. But when you get it right, this is a different one. This one's called Blyers. It's probably the second best bottom fishing search we have. Bottom in, bottom out, year in, year out for the last 25 years. It's not probably, it is. Jailbreak's number one, Blyers is number two. Why is Blyers number two? The prices are a little higher, typically. So, you know, 25 cents isn't as much of a return on a $9 stock as it is on a $4 stock, right? so on etc they're really both going after the same thing which is low RT so we're going to show that here in a second but instead of feeling like you know why didn't I take full advantage of this bottom now we feel like we have we nearly doubled our money in the, in the same you know in, in just a couple of months time okay and I realize those were two different uh, time frames if anybody was paying close attention but I can show you on each of these bottoms that that's always going to be the case. You're going to see it again here recently, I think. So uh, anyway, uh, when we get it right, we can get these kinds of, of stocks. So let's go look at it currently. Okay, Let's take an example from this year. COVID collapse, again, it's low-hanging fruit. You're going to see hundreds of percent in just on all the stocks in just weeks. Okay, Even on... November of 2020. You're going to see hundreds of percent on a lot of stocks in just weeks. But if we look at um, if we look at the current year, and let's set the stage here again with the market timing graph. This this I think could be really eye-opening for some of you. What has the stock market done all year? Gone down. Now in spots, it's exploded, right? And guess what? Every time it has, we made about 9% or so on this one. Uh, the buy to sell ratio was below 0.2 and the MTI was below 0.6, so even better. MTI, remember, that's not a requirement. It's just nice to have. Buy, buy sell below 0.2 is a requirement to be looking. Okay, so explosive day comes. We bought stocks at 9.35 a.m. that morning on January 31st. And in just two and five minutes of the third day we made over nine percent okay when we look at this one I'm gonna show you don't worry this one was a little better of course here's blast off day here right we got a little bit more run so let's see how we would have done we bought stocks this day at also approximately 9 35 a.m. that morning notice I'm saying 9 35 I at least wait the first three bars or so before I start my process. Some people wait as much as 30 minutes, which I think is also more than fine because at the end of the day, it's better to be more sure and more right than not. But once you get a good feel for it and you know when a blast off day is here and you can pull the trigger real early, okay? So same thing though we have one white soldier pattern not to the same degree as that one back in march of 2009 but this is the same two bar pattern this is usually a good one this is why this one was better than this one that's just that's that's a bullish engulf not quite as strong because the market didn't start moving right out of the gate the next morning on the prior one it actually went lower before it went higher okay you might say, well, that's a bigger turnaround. Yeah, but the change in sentiment all day long is not the same. This is a stronger pattern. It tends to give you a better result. So we teach you that kind of stuff. In a course, I'm going to tell you about later. Okay, but uh, bot stocks here. Let's see, 316. So let's go over here. I can't show you to the minute anymore because we've only got five days of intraday data. I wish I could actually go in at 935. <laughs> show you an actual result but we'll get close okay so I'm gonna go to March this year we're gonna go to this the 15th because we would have bought stocks five minutes into the next day there's some slippage here probably five or six percent because these stocks would have gapped open many of them probably to the tune of about four percent or so okay so I want you to realize that I'm not trying to pull the wool over anyone's eyes I'm just giving you all the facts now, if I quick test these, 
You say, well, that's not very good all the way to now. Yeah, but we wouldn't have held them all the way to now because the market stopped going up. Okay, so let's go back and let's see how we would have done once again in just about a week. How's 35% this year in a week with maybe 10% slippage in and out? Five on one side, five on the other. What do you think? 25% in a week, pretty good this year? I think so. Let's try Blyers. Thirty-eight percent. This one. This is one of the few times Blyers actually did better. Let's go up the ladder a little bit. Let's do S and P five hundred stocks. We're a little too chicken. We want to get a high caliber stock. Even if they're at the low end of the S and P, they're still an S and P five hundred caliber stock. So. PayPal, Etsy, Facebook, Netflix. It's not going to be as good, guys. Why? Look at the prices. Yeah, a a three hundred and forty-three dollar stock, you know, isn't going to go up another three hundred points in a week. <laughs> that's that's not going to happen. Uh, a sixteen dollar stock probably isn't going to go up sixteen dollars in a week. Yeah, probably not going to happen. At least not when any one of us buy it. Mm. So it, it really becomes a function of who you are as to which way you want to travel. But I'm going to tell you, if you're willing to go a little bit lower in stock price, like with the Pirates, where it's at least, I mean, here you're talking 10, 11. You know, let's skip over the 102. And, uh, oops, quick test all these. How's 25%? I even got the 102 one in there, didn't I? I got a 200. I got a 200 dollar one in there. It went up 34 percent. Oh my gosh, a 200 dollar one went up 34 percent. Wow. I think Kodiak Sciences was actually in there. But what creates the opportunity? Well, if we look at the graphs and we look at the dates. That's what creates the opportunity, is nailing the bottom. Because the overall chart doesn't look all that good. Because it's not. This Kodiak Sciences had trouble in River City, man. But when you get the dates right, it just doesn't matter. We bought stocks this the morning right there. Okay, the morning right here. And it went up enough. You know, a dollar on eight, a dollar fifty on seven fifty is pretty good in just a couple of days. Okay, uh, some of course are going to do even better. So I, I'm showing you that even in the worst of situations, when a market hits rally mode, even some of the ones that look the worst sometimes even end up doing the best. I mean, I ordinarily would not go out and buy a stock like that. <laughs> 200 and whatever some odd days there are in a calendar trading year than the one I would have done it here. <laughs> so with 250, I think. <laughs> so on 200, well, most, let's see, on most years, 247 out of 250 days, I'm not buying anything that looks like any of these stocks ever. But on those three days or that one day in that year where everything lines up, I'm buying 10 of them. I'm not just buying one. I'm buying all of them. Every time. Sometimes you take a little lump. Sometimes it doesn't work out this well. I'll be the first to admit. So far this year, people have seen me in real time. I haven't lost money yet on the four campaigns we've done. I might lose money on this one. We'll see. But four out of five ain't bad. Five out of five would be super awesome. Let's hope that turns out to be the case. What's the market doing today? Oh, it's still going up. Oh, man. Yeah, so we bought, we have another tool called the Derby. The Derby can be extraordinarily helpful. We bought Pirates Long this morning at about 9.45. It took a little bit more time this morning. Uh, for us to make the decision. 
Most people when I got off the webcast today were up 4% or more. Today. Just today. And when you look at the performance of this uh, strategy, it wasn't at the top of the list when we picked it, but it was the top bottom fishing search in VectorVest at 9.45 when we picked and placed the orders live, real money to Ally Invest Brokerage. Okay, we've got all the documentation to prove it. And these are the stocks we bought. And we bought them here, right around here. Okay, and yeah, that makes sense. They should be up even a little bit more now because when we got off, it was about 10.30 or so. So they're doing even better now. I think some of them front run me a little bit. I think they got in earlier. <laughs> it had to have to be up 4%. But you know, it's, uh, it's, it's just a function of risk tolerance and who you are and how you want to go. But you typically want to get in no later than on blast off day, no later than after the first half hour or so. Now look, I will also say uh, it's okay to conduct a bottom fishing campaign all the way up to a primary wave up and even follow through the next day. But any time after that is too late. You know, all the, a lot, you saw these stocks, you know, they're already up 16% today. So, you, you know, uh, if today weren't a primary wave up and you don't get one till tomorrow, you might, these might go up another 16%. Now they're up 32 and then you wait for the next open and, and now they're up 40% before you even get in, <laughs> so, you know. Uh, so, uh, it's, it's something that takes, that takes, that takes a little bit of training and a little bit of, um, you know, a little bit of, uh, of, of, of cast iron stomach to get it done right. But the more you do it, the more comfortable you get and it gets real easy. It gets real easy. Okay. So let me get back over here. Is that pretty cool or what? I mean, I'm showing you documented stuff here. So let me get back over here and let's go back to the presentation. All right, so we want to move. Now, what makes these things click? So I do want to hit this point home. Instead of ordinary stocks or high quality stocks, I think it's probably a better way to say things. Ordinary, the, who, who, who the heck ever wants to buy an ordinary stock? But what we really mean is instead of buying blue chips, very high quality stocks, what we want to do is buy the ones that have the explosive gains. And really what makes all these strategies click is this part of the search. It's called a sort. And that ultimately dictates what stocks go to the top of the list. Right? The common denominator is RT. And so all of these stocks have the lowest RT scores in VectorVest. And at the same time, what's nice about this one, they have high relative value in comparison. So if I come over to Unisearch and show you here again, this is the same sort, it's the same search, right? And we slide out here to the right. Even though these stock prices um, are exceptionally low, many of these stocks at least have some value to them. And that's all we care about. We don't care about high value. Now, if we can get a 1.4 relative value, that's great. We'll take it, you know, so don't get me wrong. The higher, the better, the relative value scores really, but anything even approaching one is totally acceptable. EPAM, how did that $300 stock go up 33%? Well, they had a lot of high relative value along with incredibly awful blood. A relative timing on zero to two is at 0.14. That stock got massacred absolutely massacred in order to get an RT of 0.14. It's down there with some of the worst stocks in the database <laughs> in terms of timing. You see what I mean? All right. So I can't answer. Uh, I love RT on Kodiak. Yeah. 0 .0, 0 0.01. That's as low as it goes. I've never seen a, a zero. <laughs> I think you got to be delisted before you get a zero. That's right. Uh, so anyway, uh, how could knowing what we showed you in this webcast change things for you? How, how could knowing precisely the right stocks to buy and when to buy them change things for you? Just really quickly, uh, maybe share some of that with me. Might go down by 300. <laughs> That's funny, Danny. It seems like we wake up to and then watch again before 930 on day one. Only, of course, a lot more than slippage. Uh, no. People saw me do this in real time, Neil. No. 
I'm giving you pretty much the right answers. Um, show quick test of today from 9.35. Not a trap. It's actually <laughs> not a trap. <laughs> Yeah I, yeah, I got it at 9.45. But yeah, if we go back to this one and bring it up to current, we can show you today's actual performance. And there's somebody in the room who actually did this, I think, because he's, he's telling me to show you. <laughs> That's good. So I got one of my traders in here. It's good. So I'm going to go back to, let's call it 9.45. And those that were in there know I had some API issues and all kinds of fun stuff today. They're up 8.21% now. From 9.45 a.m. this morning. 8.21% from 9.45 this morning. It's pretty good. There's double digit returns today. Three, almost four double digit returns today. Really almost seven. Almost seven double digit returns just today. I'm telling you guys, this course I'm about to tell you about can change your life. Now, let's talk briefly about the five trading tactics that can make you money. And I mean that, it can change your life, man. Why are these tactics important? Because risk comes from not knowing what you're doing. Yeah. Having no plan is not an option. At least that guy has a parachute. I'm going to call that a plan, actually. Emotional trading is what will inevitably result from not having a plan. We don't want that. We don't want to just flush money down the train. i got to eliminate some of these graphics. I'm feeling goofier about it now. <laughs> you guys get the point. So five trading tactics. We want to do five to 10 stocks. I would say this on your first several campaigns, you want to be at 10 period and probably want to be at 10 in infinitum because it just gives you more chances to get the, the double digit gainers. It's, you know, it's like, it's, it's like going to get a lottery ticket. Do you want one? You want one or you want 10? You want five or you want 10? You want 10. It's not even a question, right? Now there is such a thing, of course, as diminishing returns. And so once you start to get to say, certainly 30, you might as well just buy an index at that point. You know, you're gonna get some big losers in there somewhere. So 10's the right number, guys. 10's the right number, okay? 10's the right number. Otherwise, just go buy some ETFs. You can get some triple leverage, have a lot of fun. Probably do pretty well that way too. Uh, never risk more than 1% to 2% of your total portfolio value in every single trade. So lucky for you, we use a stop loss and give you the percentages you need to know to make sure that that is never an issue if you buy 10 stocks. If you just use what we recommend to use, your risk is 1.5. Don't buy more than two stocks per industry group. It just makes good sense. It doesn't actually aid in your returns <clears throat> typically whatsoever although on occasion it does very rarely does it ever do that in fact and more often than not it actually deteriorates your t return a little bit but why do it <clears throat> just in that odd chance that you end up in 10 stocks in the same sector that gets smoked for whatever reason particularly in the kind of market environment we're in now where if Snapchat can come out and say, well, we might have some bad news on the horizon and the stock price drops 33%. What you don't want to be is in an entire industry because think of all the social stocks and what happened to them, right? So you just don't, it does, you don't want to get blindsided like that. You don't want to be up 30 or 40% in the campaign, wake up the next morning and you're up five, <laughs> you know, uh, or worse, never up and now down a lot, you know, so it's, it just doesn't make sense. Just do that. Just do no more than two per industry. Uh, favor ratcheting or trailing stop losses always. We use Profit Locker. We use anywhere from a 50-15 to 115, and we give you some coaching on you know, how to set your druthers there uh, at a later time. But allow your portfolio to extinguish itself. Don't replace stocks after it confirmed up is signaled because not from a bottom fishing strategy, even though they might end up doing well, it's really not the right risk at that point. You only want to buy these really beaten down stocks when they're low. You don't want to keep buying them. <laughs> or if they're still low three weeks into a rally, do you want to buy that one? 
I mean, the idea here was to buy the low ones at the low, not to buy the ones that are still low three weeks after the low. See what I mean? So, and I will tell you, that's how the numbers bear out. Uh, but it's just pure logic. It doesn't make sense to continue to bottom. It doesn't make sense to be bottom fishing when markets are high. <laughs> what you're going to do is get your head handed to you in a basket. Okay. <clears throat> When you use our stop loss, it can do incredibly well for you. You know, it's just really, really good. Is it going to get you out at absolutely the peaks of all of the trade? No, nothing does ever, you know, but it's really good. It, what you can see here is it accommodates a lot of volatility to allow you to get on to bigger and better returns in the future. So it's really super sexy. Um, it's called Profit Locker. You'll learn more about it, you know, in a coaching uh, scenario we'll tell you about. So knowing when to sell, that's incredibly important. We use Profit Locker 5015 as a base case. Okay, so for those of you that are VectorVest subscribers, you know what that is. All right, do you think these are gonna help you? Of course you do, so I'm not even gonna ask the question. Uh, you're here today because you wanna take advantage of these opportunities. Wasn't that something to see how bottom fishing searches have, uh, have done so well this year? Now, I said there was slippage. I mean, we're up 30% total for the year. So, I mean, one of those campaigns was said it was up 30% in one campaign. Well, you had another down day and whatever. So we actually made around 16%, I think it was, uh, you know, on that particular campaign. But, you know, that's, <laughs> look, 16% in three days on 10 stocks, 10 trades. How many people do that con consistently? And that was a terrible turn. Imagine if that's what the kind of thing we get, real trades, real executions through a brokerage in three days, what do you think we get in three weeks? Just need three weeks of the market to go. That's all we need. That way you're confident. Your system is ultimately going to dictate your success. You got to have a system. You can kind of piece together one from what I taught you today, or you can go make sure. So. We want to get away from not knowing when market bottoms are there. We want to get away from buying good, safe stocks rising in price only at market bottoms. And we want to know when to sell. So here's how you can figure it out. Now you're going to get a choice. And the choice is quite simple. You can get out there with trial and error, do exactly what I showed you. You are going to make mistakes. Why? Because all you did was come listen to a guy talk for 45 minutes, tell you how awesome something was and give you enough information to just get started. And you'll probably have some pretty good hit or miss success, honestly. <laughs> but if you want to make sure and not have to do it alone and make a lot of mistakes, what you want is the guidance. So we've got a course for you guys, five weeks to learn how to generate explosive profits by nailing market bottoms with precision. It's not going to take five weeks anymore. And I'll explain why. Uh, it's not for everyone. It's for people that are serious, people that want to be able to do the kinds of things we talked about, the things that we're doing right now as we speak, where you could have been up somewhere in the neighborhood of minus commissions, 8% today, no slippage at that point. Uh, if I had six hours to chop down a tree, I'd spend the first four hours sharpening the ax. Great quote by a great man. What does it mean? It means if you want to do something, you better learn what it takes to do it right. Because there's only, there's only been three buying opportunities of a lifetime in the last hundred years. Actually four now. COVID was another one. Right. Module one, secret to precision bottom fishing is all about mindset. Spend more time getting your mind right. Number two, a lot more time on how to pinpoint entries, looking at patterns, looking at divergences, looking at uh, what it means to have the explosive day, all of those things, knowing how you got it right. Powerful searches for big winners. That's module three. We give you some of our favorites. We do discuss quickly that cherry picking can be done by analyzing stock charts, but I gotta be honest with you, particularly when you're brand new at this, it usually doesn't work any better and it often works out worse. Some of the ugliest charts, this is the whole mindset paradigm shift. Some of the ugliest charts, like I showed you on that stock that had the big 80% uh, drop 
ended up being one of the big winners. <laughs> so, so cherry picking charts to your make make you feel better, but often it's going to give you worse results. I'll just let the air out of the bag on that one because I I want you guys to do it right right out of the gate. Just buy the darn top ten. Doesn't matter what they look like. What you don't do is buy stocks that aren't trading. Like the ruble was back on that March 16th bottom. The ruble actually wasn't even trading. So we had to go get the next stock. But you don't want to buy stocks that aren't trading very much, right? Or that aren't trading at all. You don't want to do that. That's for sure. So we, we talk about things like that. Uh, also, critical money management, we spend a lot more time and giving you a definitive plan. So five modules, you can get this done as quickly as you want now, which is good. Um, $595, so $600. It's all recorded. You're going to have all six of these modules that you see there. Plus, you're going to have a recorded mastery session where people ask Jerry or I questions on these six modules. Plus, you're going to get four international uh, 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 mastery sessions that cater to the international markets plus you're going to get three more mastery sessions that I did just about a month ago for the last people that went through this course you're going to get all of that there's probably I don't know close to 30 hours of, of, of Steve and Jerry mostly Steve on there telling you how to bottom fish Okay, so however long it's going to take you to get through those 30 hours but just the core modules alone, many of you, that's all you're going to need. Yeah, that's about six hours. And you're, you're, you're cruising. You are cruising. I would say it's worth watching the mastery sessions. Uh, you're, what you're going to find is the questions that you have, they're the questions everybody has, you know, usually. So they should all be answered. If they're not, you can always shoot me an email, Steve C. at VectorVest. I'll be glad to answer them. So it's $600. That's, listen. We just showed you how to make 8% today from 9.35. Does that pay for 600 bucks? Oh, I think so. It should. <laughs> you know? Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm going to send this out into the chat. And so all you got to do is click that link. It'll take you to a place where you got to go. Now you can do this with any service. You don't need real time or derby. They are helpful. I showed you why even in this webcast and how they can be helpful that's how i picked the very best strategy in all of vector vest today by the way <laughs> let me show you that again not only did i point these guys in the right this is this has 180 searches in it the one that we picked at 9.45 today is the best performing basket of stocks in all of VectorVest. That's getting it right. If you want to get it right, I can show you how. $600 is all it's going to cost. Retarded. With what I just showed you, is that worth $600? It's worth $6,000. www.vectorvest.com slash BF. That's all you got to do. Those of you that are on YouTube, get in there. We made those trades today. I got people in the room that told you. He said, man, you got to show these guys. Run it at 945. Show them what you did. Absolutely. Thank you for that, by the way. He knows I had API issues, so I can't show you in the brokerage because I couldn't get the orders through fast enough. <laughs> but they all did it. Okay. All right, guys, I got to roll. So let's see if we got some questions here. Steve, where would you say we are now with the current market situation? Well, you know, the, the, the place we are now is markets are still low uh, and we could get some significant bounce here and the bounce could be better than some people think. And I'm not going to I'm not going to say that that's a certainty. And the reality is nobody ever knows. But with the indicators as low as they are, upside potential does outweigh downside risk for the moment. Notice how I said for the moment there, uh, maybe for the next few days to a few weeks, right? But without some kind of major economic catalyst, it's very unlikely that we're going right back to the highs. I, almost impossible, I would think, you know? So, 
but can we get four or five dollar rise on the vector vest composite before we go lower ten dollars yeah you, i don't see why not it's happened before so uh, that's why i hate you know uh, watching tv and all this crap because you know, really they don't tell you how markets work you know, markets don't just keep going down every day for a year on end it just doesn't happen <laughs> you know uh, anyway I'll get off of my little diatribe there all right let's see really good presentation thanks Neil appreciate that do a leap get better price no that's the lowest price possible sorry we wanted to give it to everyone because here's why uh, we know that if you take this course and you do one successful bottom fishing campaign you are a subscriber for life you might even retire <laughs> you know uh, I'll never forget Dr. Delito and I were uh, at a um, I don't think it was Trader's I think it was Money Show in um, Las Vegas in May of 2009 so we talked about the March 2009 low we had three people at our booth that ended up being our best salesman we've ever had uh, even better than us because we work at Vector Us, you know, making sure people filled out. <laughs> filled out. They, one gal was a nurse in Phoenix. She retired. It, she was 10 years away from retirement. She retired. Uh, longtime subscriber, Richard up in Philadelphia. He was, uh, they were all part of a little close knit uh, group that they formed together. They, they bought options. They didn't just buy the stocks. They bought options. They bought at the money options on all of these stocks. They were up multiple thousands of percent in just two months <laughs> it was insane all right guys i gotta roll y'all been great i will see you guys soon thanks for spending some time with me we'll see you soon gotta go bye now